I that, like that uh, Chinese-looking yeah. Russian Shavkat. Oh, Shavkat oh, Rachmanov. So oh my mother. He's yeah. he's the that most under the scary. radar guy ever. He's oh. the most under the radar guy ever because he's everybody's avoiding him yes. and he doesn't have a big name yet, but he yeah. should. You remember my name? I am Fuji champion. One, two years, I am UFC champion. Inshallah. It's an experience of nice body shot. Oh, that hurt his liver. Oh. That hurt his liver. It's over. Wow. Oh, it's a liver punch. The liver punch put him on the canvas. That is Soon, we will witness the next Octagon appearance from a young prospect whose name has long been discussed loudly in the fighting community. On December 16th at UFC 296, the formidable and undefeated Nomad, currently ranked 5th in the best welterweights on the planet, will make his return. In today's video, let's reminisce about the best performances in Shavkat's career where he finished the fight with a fierce and brutal knockout. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, also like and leave a comment in four words. And now let's get started. Here we go. So the official starting point of the Kazakh Warriors journey is considered his debut fight in mid-October 2014. As time showed, his first MMA trial ended with a confident victory by a chokehold. Triangle, he's got a triangle instead, like I said, with long legs like that. Great. Triangles are very, very good. Great awareness there. Shavkat, he's got him. He taps. That was one opportunity he got in and he took it. All, it's all it takes, one opportunity. The debut guy beats the 2-0. and all. A month and a half later, eager to stay active like Dylan Dennis in his only year, Shavkat stepped into the ring against Brazilian Marcus Vinicius. By that time, the latter had a record of 7 wins and 8 losses. Despite this, he still seemed to believe in his abilities and accumulated experience as it turned out, very much in vain. Apologies for the spoiler. As usual, each match starts standing right after the referee's command. The process goes like this. Fighters slowly find their rhythm and start attacking each other, reacting to their opponent's actions. At least that's what we base it on most of the time. But this time, everything went a bit differently. As soon as the fight started, the athletes began sizing each other up, throwing feints and various tricks and here, Nomad applied a deadly look that triggered excessive sweating in Marcus, a trigger known to Derek Lewis. An embarrassing condition called my balls was hot. Prompting the referee to pause the fight to wipe Vinicius's back. When the battle resumed, Shavkat began to physically assert his intentions. He started advancing on his opponent, provoking his reactions. Following the rule, the best defense is offense, Marcus closed in and cornered Rachmanov. And that's it folks, he held him there until the referee intervened again. We understand that the text action ratio is somewhat disproportionate, so let's fast forward a few moments. Soon, a real brawl started between the fighters, showcasing the true beauty of mixed martial arts. Bright exchanges combined with transitions to grappling didn't take long to happen. When both athletes got angry and went all out, that's when the most interesting part began. Shavkat took a dominant position on the ground and without much thought, started feeding Vinicius with well-crafted bombs. Vinicius had no answer to Shavkat's skills and simply took all the hits to the head. There was no resistance at all, as Rachmanov felt comfortable in that position. Very soon, it all ended thanks to the same referee who finally stopped the fight and awarded our hero the victory via technical knockout. Without deviating from the course, let's move on to Nomad's third professional fight. On May 2nd, 2015, the emerging prospect honored the M1 organization to show how to handle guys without unnecessary formalities. He faced a world karate champion named Hulk, who at the time had a record of 5-1. His name was Bartos Chirek. Interesting fact, the age difference between the fighters is 12 years, and remarkably, in terms of skill level and overall preparation, they are approximately at the same distance from each other, except for jokes. Because it all extended in the middle of the round in the most cold-blooded and confident manner. After enduring a powerful takedown from the textured and muscular pole, 
Rachmanov started extracting strength from the opponent's body. He immediately engaged him on the ground, turning the consequences of the takedown against Chirek. A few minutes of this symbolic but not useless scuffle completely deprived Bartos of the desire and ability to continue any competition. Rachmanov did everything required of him in the situation and handled the task with flying colors. In a few moments, with a hard ground and pound from the top, Chirek's face flattened against the canvas. And that means we've witnessed the second knockout victory from the Kazakh fighter. Now, let's go back to the year 2016, more precisely to June the 4th. By that time, Nomad's resume consisted of five names, to which he added two more victories by way of chokeholds. The next stop for the young warrior was the 67th event from the M1 promotion, where Rachmanov faced a fighter named Marcelo Brito. Let's digress a bit from the main topic, if you allow, to provide a quality introduction to this upcoming battle. Recently, the president of the Ultimate League shared information about going through an 86-hour water fast, attaching a corresponding photo to it. So it seems that before facing the Brazilian, Shavkat underwent a fighter's fasting, judging by the zeal and determination with which he entered this fight. Nomad immediately took on the lead role, took his place in the center of the ring, and went straight for the victory with brilliance and clear intent in his eyes. Marcelo's attempts to evade the attack and seize the initiative through groundwork quite expectedly were unsuccessful. Rachmanov set his rules from the very beginning. Pursuing Brito around the ring and throwing single strikes, the Kazakh, one might say, hypnotized his opponent who was accustomed to a measured and calm pace. But unexpectedly, Nomad attacked Brito's liver and this single hit was enough to secure another victory by knockout. It's the experience of nice body shot. Oh, that hurt his liver. Oh. That hurt his liver. It's over. Wow. So it's a liver punch. The liver pu now, let's fast forward two years because that's the break Rachmanov took during that period. After an early submission victory in February 2018 and a bright comeback to action, Shavkat got the chance to challenge the local welterweight champion. On May the 12th at the 10th Battle of Nomads, in the main event of the evening, our hero faced off against a representative from Tajikistan, Farudun Odilov. Reviewing this match, we want to make a slight jab at the UFC for the fact that since Shavkat signed with them, his toughest challenge in his career is still considered to be this confrontation. And this is not trash talk, but pure and undisguised truth. And since we've started sharing some observations, the status of the event adds extra confidence to the fighters and as a result, the fans' interest in the fight, no doubt. Just imagine, would the audience celebrate with such enthusiasm if they knew it wasn't a title fight, but just a regular match from the card? We don't think so. Or would the fighters push themselves to their real maximum, knowing that there's more at stake than just a simple victory and another name on the record? Probably yes, rather no. And this is precisely what Shavkat Rachmanov demonstrated showing unprecedented endurance, spirit resilience, and his competence that evening. Even when his opponent delivered a heavy blow at the end of the second round, resulting in a knockdown and furious shouts from the corners, <laughs> Nomad found the strength, withstood such a dangerous moment, and came back into the game in the next round. The third five-minute period became the final one in this confrontation. As history showed, Shavkat Rachmanov not only reversed the course of events, but literally forced circumstances to lean in his favor. Closer to the three-minute mark, Faridun Odilov was so exhausted that he simply started running away from the Kazakh, who wanted to retaliate as impressively as possible for the episode at the end of the previous round. Thus, our hero secured his fourth victory by technical knockout in his professional career. I dedicate this victory to all Kazakhstanis, to my coach, my family, to everyone who supports me. Thank you all. Alga Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is strong.
Without deviating from the set course, let's move on to Shavkat's next octagon appearance. In early December of the same year, Rachmanov, already in the status of a local organization champion, entered his first title defense at the 11th Battle of the Nomads. His jubilee opponent was a native of Kyrgyzstan, Rinat Saikbaev. Judging by the footage available to us thanks to the internet, the first and sorry for another spoiler and only defense of the Kazakh Terminators Championship belt went as well as possible. Shavkat Rachmanov dominated his opponent in every proposed aspect, gave him a detailed tour of all the corners of the ground and in essence secured his 10th victory in a premature manner. Four years into his professional career, the official verdict that concluded this encounter was a technical knockout, as Sayakbayev refused to continue the fight. Nomad was already too much for the local guys back then, but it was only the beginning. As you have already learned, the first title defense at the Battle of Nomads became the last for the rising prospect from Kazakhstan. This happened because the M1 organization, which is not mentioned for the first time today, offered Rachmanov to challenge their welterweight championship. On March the 30th, 2019, Shavkat entered his 11th professional fight and, as part of the 101st numbered event, faced a fighter named Danila Prikasa. This time we won't beat around the bush and get straight to the point. The first round of the main event started quite dynamically. Various kicks, setups and combinations were in play from both sides. Both fighters, being fresh, tried to impose their will on the opponent standing in front of them. Yet the more skillful in technique was the Kazakh. Closer to the middle of the round, Rachmanov cornered the Russian against the ropes and immediately connected significant knees, causing pain in the torso area. Although Prikasa did everything to resist and offered due resistance, Shavkat still held initiative. Despite feeling his superiority at close range, Rachmanov was also not against breaking away for a while and, to the cheer of the audience, engaging in a short exchange with his counterpart. However, this didn't last long, and the end of the five-minute round passed under the same pressure against the cage in the clinch. In the next segment, the Kazakh Terminator increased the already high pace and then without any hesitation or second thoughts, took the Russian to the ground. Gradually, he began to systematically break down Danila into the smallest details, like a seasoned technician with years of experience. A backward hammer fist and the elbow caught him on the way past. Prikaza has to do something. With each subsequent minute, Prikaza's position deteriorated more and more, and ultimately Shavkat Rachmanov overwhelmed his opponent, pounding him into a semi-conscious state. The 11th premature victory in his professional career, the 6th by technical knockout, and as the cherry on top, another belt conquest in a new organization. I want to thank everyone present here, all Kazakhs. Our president, I want to thank you all very much. I will move on. I will continue to raise our flag on the world arenas. May Allah grant us health. Sealy's using length of the shots there. Oh, big shot. Oh, he's, oh, he's, he's done it! Oh, he seems to stiffen up there. He's he has. Out. He's out. Oh, that was so solid ground and pound here. The next knockout on Nomad's path, a decisive outcome that leaves no room for the judges, came three months later at M1's 102nd numbered event. On June 28th of the same year, Shavkat Rachmanov once again entered the championship defense this time against another contender from Brazil, Thiago Varejao. This time, the performance of the undefeated talent from Kazakhstan did not extend beyond the initial five minutes. We may be wrong, but most likely not. However, it seems to us that the hometown crowd in Nur Sultan on the fan stands became the key factor determining the outcome of the fight that night. The genuine support of loyal fans led in a chain reaction to all circumstances aligning in such a way that the champion entered the bout with a single mindset, to kill or be killed. Because throughout the God-given time allotted, all Tiago did was receive damage in every proposed aspect. Rachmanov presented a perfect version of a mixed martial artist, capable of giving you a tough time anywhere he had to fight. It doesn't matter where the fight goes, the main thing is what you will do for your defense, because this guy has long known what to do in a given situation. 
In fact, another bastion fell in the face of Nomad at the end of the first round. Shavkat secured a technical knockout in his favorite manner, extending his winning streak to 12 in a row. We raised the Kazakh flag everywhere, and I'm proud of it. Thanks to everyone who helped me prepare for this fight. To my coach, to everyone who helped. Thank you very much. And to conclude today's episode, let's recall the latest knockout victory from the undefeated warrior from Kazakhstan. Soon after defeating the Brazilian, Shavkat Rachmanov caught the interest of the Ultimate Fighting Championship and its matchmakers in particular. Admit it, it's not every day you come across a young and hungry prospect on a 12-fight win streak. Moreover, a two-time champion of local organizations in his homeland with successful title defenses. UFC also recognized this and signed the talent in the largest MMA promotion. As you may remember, Nomad's debut came during the times of the pandemic. However, despite all the difficulties, this guy burst into the new league in the best possible way, continuing the trend of victories and a pathological unwillingness to leave decisions to the judges. After two successful performances, ending in submissions in the early rounds, Shavkat Rachmanov faced Carlston Harris on February the 5th, 2022. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I feel it less, like everything uh, uh, going uh, higher that I, the, the media focus on me right now. Uh, but, you know, I'm ready for this too because uh, I know my goals and I'm ready for this too. That the, if you want to go too high, you need to be ready for this too. Here we will say it straight and without any lyrical digressions. The third victory in the UFC didn't take long. The Kazakh Terminator dominated on his counterpart in just under one round, first dropping him with a spinning heel kick and then finishing him off in a spectacular manner. Another technical knockout and a confident rise in the rankings of the welterweight division. You know, he fought many tough opponents and no one finished him. I was able to do it. I don't know, it's gonna be UFC's decision, but I'm ready for the title shot. And if it's gonna be in Abu Dhabi, it's gonna be beautiful. Oh! Spin kick sets him down. And now trying to end it. Big ground and pound here. Harris. At the moment, Shavkat Rachmanov is firmly entrenched in the top five of the welterweight division. Like a cool-headed and patient hunter, he has started waiting for the next name to appear on the horizon, which can be added to his service record. It has become somewhat amusing. With a record of 17 premature victories, Nomad has eight knockouts and nine submissions. It seems that with each octagon appearance, he decides on the go how to finish the encounter still not giving opportunities to the judges. In general, the return of this guy to the main octagon is expected soon, and we eagerly await that day.